in, in my opinion, especially from the group stages, maybe a little bit harsh to say imports uh, the one owning the backpack. Kind of everyone gets a share of holding up that backpack. They've all had their moments. I mean, you've got, as a team, you've got to be cohesive. You've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. But import is also the king of the jungle at the moment. It's not Rampage, it is import. He <laughs> is... I would say he is the best jungle in the tournament. I think there is debate for other players as well, but you can't say that import is not in that contention either way. He has played multiple different characters. He's played the Chimera, the Rampage, he's played the Richter, he's played the Crunch. And, I mean, what objective hasn't he stolen at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Unless he can't figure one. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of room in that backpack for all the neutrals that he's stealing. You know, you could have that debate about who is the best jungler, but I think when it comes to who is the best objective stealer in this tournament, I think it's import, and we and we all know that for sure. And uh, honestly, it's it's going to be a, a, such an entertaining game uh, to mention because you mentioned you know, all the other players on Import's backpack as well. You know, you've got Noz, you've got Wangle, Julie, and Zayn as well, all standout players in their own rights. You know, Wangle is cur is a current Fang Booth champion as well winning it with uh, indecisive in fang move number five so you know wanting to add to that uh add to his uh omega.city trophy page as well but the draft is going to get underway and from what we saw within the group stage as well sunder by no means going to make this easy it's such a strong dominant team j boy ragnarok kimbo met boy Ridwano. these are huge names in the eu scene as well this should be an absolute banger of a series but we got to see how it plays out. Rampage, that first ban, King of the Jungle, is just going to be import, not Rampage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you don't want to import on the Rampage. He is the most dominant jungler we've seen so far. He's just got really good early games. He's transitioned so well into that mid game. Actually, has quite a decent damage threat as well with going the bash this week. So, taking it away, if Ragnarok himself, we haven't talked about Sunder that much so far, but he is very much a carry jungler. He mm -hmm. loves playing those Feng Maos, those Seraphs, getting that damage, getting those kills, and leading his team from the front in ways where Import is more of that tankier, frontline, Bruce Reed uh, type of player. So it's very two different types of junglers mm. that we'll see in this game come through. And it will yeah. be interesting to see who gets a, a advantage in that as we get to the other band from Import's backpack. It's going to be that Richter. No real surprises there, honestly. Yeah, no one really wants to deal with that, and especially with uh, Shin's uh, highlight montage from that previous series of Richter Hooks. I think we can understand why maybe that pick is going to be taken away. But also Ridwano as well. I know with uh, the time on the River Samurais, with, I believe Ridwano was playing in a jungle role, that Richter pick came up huge uh, for them many times. So a pretty safe takeaway, as you say. But this does leave some power picks available i'm wondering which team wants to take the quang because the quang has just been dominating every single game that he's been picked in we've seen nos play a lot of quang on imports backpack so i'm definitely expecting them to pick this if pick it up if sunder does not um j boy also has played it a lot in that off lane so it's definitely a, a, a thing they want uh mm -hmm. bellica is also online so if Kimbo in the mid lane or maybe Grano in that support wants to pick it up first. I can see them picking that as well. But I mean, basically, it is going to be that Krang. You can also pick up the Steel if you want to. That's not really been useful. But what we're talking about, of course, is the Krang. Yep, Quang will be locked in there. We've spoken uh, in the previous drafts as well, kind of with the flex potential that Quang can bring. But uh, you know, we've seen him mostly in off lane of course Jax was playing quang in that jungle as well and uh, it's also a takeaway from import because i know import has been practicing that quang inside of the jungle as well but what is going to be the response here because as you say you still have some pretty big picks available that bellica is still on the board uh chimera is still available rampage of course it's not i was about to say that um decker yeah, yeah. being another one going to be picked up for imports backpack makes sense as the pick as well but this second pick could be interesting i'm wondering what else they could say maybe i know look towards a frontline pick maybe but no they're going to take the other power pick in the lieutenant bellica yeah definitely the next two real high priority heroes being picked up here bellica i mean we could say there's select picks in this potential but 99 percent of the time it is going to be that decker in support bellica in that mid lane and both just very very strong heroes bellica has that one shot potential come that level 11 that rank two ultimate and get a few items online is pretty safe in lane as well and decker does great engage great disengage he has mm. a lot of different abilities to use that can help heal or do whatever you need so that's going to be a good set of picks for imports backpack so far and we're going to get the next one from sunder it's going to be the gideon and the zaras 
Now, this is an interesting one, Falcon. I do want to pick your brain on this one because in previous tournaments, when Zaris has been kind of one of them standout picks, uh, plays offlane, plays jungle, he never really seems out of the meta, but teams, at least today in the quarterfinals and recently, haven't been taking the Zaris at all. Why do you think that? I think it's more just player opinion, honestly. I think that's some of the players we've had so far just don't really played that much Zaris. Bondry just played a bit, but come the next couple of teams, I think a lot more players do pick up the Zaris. I am not 100% sure where it's going to go though, because I think both J-Boy and Ragnarok can play him quite proficiently. So I think it's going to be wait and see to see what they want to put against most likely the Severog import. He could play Severog jungle. It is that type of tanky front line that he likes to play as well. But it's also just very, very slow. So mm. I would expect that to go to the north most likely. Yeah, and just uh, having that uh, solo lane matchup, you know, we have seen Subrog versus Quang quite a lot, really. I'm expecting this to be Quang going into the solo lane. Zaris in the off lane is where I'm currently putting my money at, but we do have that uh, flex potential. What we do know is that Gideon's in the mid lane, at least. So some things are nice hopefully. and stable. Uh, well, hopefully. This is EU after all. We never know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Twin Blast is going to be the band to take away from Metboy, at least. And, you know, ADC is being left all the way to the fourth and fifth pick for both of these teams. Wondering if another one's going to be let through the band phase. Muriel is going to be the takeaway for uh, Sunder as well, which is, um, as a ban, I'm I'm going to have a throw a question mark about that because Decker and Bellica have been locked in. And we, we kind of know that that's the support at mid right there. Please. Both of these bands are very questionable because Imports Backpack could fourth pick Twin Blast here quite easily and they could have banned a support themselves away, probably Narbas or something like that, just to make sure that Sunder has a less choice. Or maybe we're having some technical difficulty and he's actually okay, right. Backpack banned the Muriel, Sunder bid, You know what, all of a sudden Blast. that makes a lot more sense. Okay, no, those are just... really good sets of bands actually, I really like yeah. them. Um, it's going to be right. Yeah, as you say, of course Backpack banning away the Muriel, making sure that the support wall uh, is reduced for Sunder and Sunder don't want Julie to play the Trim Blast, that's her most comfortable hero. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take that away, make sure that they can't pick that on the fourth pick. I still think Imports Backpack will pick an ADC here. Uh, Wraith is available, which is pretty good. Mm. I can see that being played. Uh, maybe the Drongo is. It's the Drongo. Um, just very good against anti diving He's a Strapful Cannon. It gives some CC immunity as well as that Gag Grenade uh, to just do a lot of science as well. So we'll have to see what Sunder wants to play into that because they still haven't picked any of their duo lane. Well, we're going to be seeing that first pick. It's going to be the Murdoch locked in. Uh, almost with, of course, the Drongo Twin Blast out of the way. Only really um, Kira Stardust picking that Revenant in a very similar situation from that first set as well. But the Murdoch, pretty standard pick as well. And also one that Metboy is particularly known for. But we do get to see the steal. And this actually, Falcon, is a pick that I'm really surprised has been falling through the draft almost this far. I mean, both of the tanks, both of the main tanks, Rampage and Victor, was banned away at the start, where several was also picked. It's really your only last tanky person to play left. I mean, you had the Zars and Krang already, so the Bruisers were at the front line, which was decent already, so you could have picked the Narvas if you wanted to. But the Murdoch Steel Lane is very, very good at level 6. It has that all in engage. Murdoch mm -hmm. obviously has his um, long armed Lord, which covers the entire map as well, if he wants to look for a trade in the off lane. And we're just going to get the last pick on for Imports Backpack. It's going to be that Grunts. And I think this basically guarantees that Severog is going to be in that solo lane for Noz. Grunts is going to be part of the right import. He's played that in the groups before. And basically, I think the Krang is probably going to go into that solo lane. Zars is going to be in that jungle wall. More than likely not looking at these comps now. But again, we have to see. Yeah, that is the thing with this flex potential as well, especially with like the Quang and the Zaris. And also, like going back to like previous tournaments when we've had similar uh, situations with like kind of uh, Greystone and Quang, or uh, well, especially in set number one, but like Greystone and Severog uh, was a quite a, a popular uh, combination. And, uh, you know, Greystone and Zaris, you don't really know until you actually get into the game. But these compositions have been completely rounded out. So let us know in Twitch chat where do your allegiances what lie? Who is taking this? First game, Sunder or Imports Backpack. As the game is ready, we're going to be dropping down onto the battlefield very soon. And I, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, 
imports getting another return game on this crunch as you say you know in the group stage it's really popped off and especially if he needs to get in the pit for some of these objective steals that he's been known for pretty safe bet he's going to get in that pit with a double forward crunch yeah you got Ridwana on that steal that can actually lock him down quite well same with J-Boy and Ragnarok so there is a lot of abilities from Team Sunder to get that CC onto import but he's also playing crunch so you never know and my suspicions were correct. J-Boy is going to be piloting that crank. We have Ragnarok on that Zarus. So everything is pretty much standard. Nothing else unseen is any weird. We still got the Decker mm -hmm. in the support wall. So we haven't got any weird e <laughs> Decker mids going on in this game, which is just great. I love that. And looking at level one, it's pretty calm, pretty chill. Yeah, uh, calm and chill is definitely uh, the word for it, at least. You know, we don't have any invades. We don't have any pu uh, pushing into the opposition jungle to get some warding down. Both teams wanting to respect and uh, feels a bit all quiet at the moment. You know, just waiting for that action to happen. Of course, minions about to pass their towers. So we're going to start to see the laning phase develop here. But neither team wanting to push the boat out and go for anything crazy. Both starting red side as well. So we're going to have a pretty standard start to all things considered here for the first game of this quarterfinal. Yeah, I mean, both teams don't have the best level one. They both, they really want to get a few abilities online, especially in this solo and mid lane. I think if anywhere that's going to happen, it's probably going to be in the duo lane with the Drongo Deco. They have a really good early game advantage against the melee range of Steel and Dr Murdoch. So we'll have to see if they look for any sort of engage. Also, Import is over here, of course. He hasn't got level 6 anytime soon, but he still has that mini gun and the slow on his uh, forward punch and his left punch. So if he wants to go for a gank, it is available. See, level 2 has been ticked over for the uh, Import's backpack duo lane. Able to push Ridwano and Metboy under the tower. That's a double ranged matchup into the ranged melee that we have seen time and time again. The pressure just coming out, but of course... As you say, just a couple of abilities down the line. All of a sudden, that duo lane will be a little bit more, well, a bit less oppressive for Reduano on the steel at the moment. Ragnarok taking the camp, able to remove that ward that was planted there by uh, by the Bellica. Pimple's backpack, uh, Wangle. We also got uh, J-Boy and Noz. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, checking the notes. Uh, a bit of trading, all, all things considered. We just standard starts across the board. Uh, I guess it gives us some time to talk, but saying that, level uh, 3 minutes is coming up, where buffs are happening, and it doesn't look like anything else is going to happen, so I'm going to keep him talking, and I'm mm -hmm. going to immediately stop talking because there's a gank in the offing. Oh, yep, Import going to go behind J-Boy. Doesn't have any mana at this point, so may have to burn the early blink, and he will blink up to the ledge. Import's going to follow it, though, with the uh, good use of the stun install wall. J-Boy dropping down with the light of the heavens, but there's not enough to give that shield. Noz, first blood for Import's backpack. J-Boy being a bit too aggressive at the start. Obviously, you want to try and get as much down into the several early game as you can, but you can see on the map, there was no real wards in the river lane, so... Import could easily just go from his four camp into the river, go along, and J-Boy was way too pissed up. Even had to use Blink. Or did he use his Blink? Uh, I'm he not did, too yes. sure. He did use his Blink, but he wasn't able to get away. So that's also really good because Noz got the kill. So although Import can probably snowball a bit harder, Noz getting that kill means that he's going to have a bit more items. He probably gets this Brimstone now online now, which is going to make that lane a lot more bearable for him. Because we did have, uh, in the previous games as well, Sevrog versus Quang has probably been like the most consistent matchup inside the solo lane. And it has been whoever's piloting that Quang just pushing the Sevrog under the tower. But good heads up play by Import, as you say, to get that early gank in as well and just relieve a little bit of pressure on that Sevrog. Ragnarok making a move towards the mid lane. Wangle on the Bellica doesn't have the mobility. Get away from this one. Needs to do a hit to that size because Salt Kimbo goes forward. There's a stun. Size of Salt does come down onto Kimbo. Gonna be enough to get away, but Wangle does take quite a healthy dose of damage from Kimbo. He's gonna have to back away. Yeah, has to back away, but doesn't burn the bling, so that's not too bad for Wangle. He is gonna have to reset now, though. And it's gonna be depending on if he can get that chemical ward online if he's going that way. Import big heads up from him. He's actually gonna be cover the mid lane as well, as Ridwano's gonna tower die. I'm going to go for a ball rush there. Might have um, been a, a bit of a, an adventurous misclick. 
I would assume here, but uh, Import going to use the uh, opportunity with the reset coming out from this Gideon to get a little bit of a bit of knowledge in towards Ragnarok's jungle. Might have been able to take away one of those jungle camps as well before retreating back into his own blue side. You can see Zayn actually hitting these containment fences and Ridwana really starting to uh, struggle against it, uh, Julie and Zayn in this duo lane. We saw Metboy uh, reset there, so he was on his own, maybe a bit too pissed up. I'm not sure too much what he was doing that far up in the lane, but he's going to have to force the reset now because he's going to be staggered in that duo lane. And it's just going to give Julie and Zane a bit more priority in that duo lane. No gold buff is up, but they can really push that tower uh, wave in and then get a free reset as well because the wave is going to pass into the tower and then it's going to bounce back towards them as we can see them on the map have both stopped moving. So more than likely resetting back to their base. I know it could be the imports backpack uh, fanatic death brush, but no, it is going to be that reset back to the base. Spend some of that hard earned gold. Six minutes on the board, only the one kill in that solo side. Talk about the mid lane though. You know, Wangle doesn't have the blink, and we did. Uh, I did have a, a chat with F6 during our set as well. Kind of how almost how difficult that can be for the Bellica, especially with that black hole. As uh, you can see that. Uh, Kimbo did have the level 6 advantage, but the Bellica does tick over to level 6 as well. But not having that blink, I expect maybe Ragnarok to uh, try and make another move work over here. I think, doesn't she still have a blink? She, uh, Wrangle did not use it when Ragnarok... Oh, actually, apologies, yes. Yeah, Ragnarok didn't um, get the blink out of Wrangle, so he's a lot safer. But Inforce back. Yeah, with the gang, with the size of your soul, blink and torn space going to be used. Kimbo getting all the way out of there wants absolutely nothing to do with that gang. But that is a confirmed blink, at least onto Kimbo. Come on, TJ. This uh pay attention to what uh, day and time it is. Import though, then to keep around in this mid lane, size of your soul does connect onto Ragnarok, but he is under tower. Import not gonna feel uh, adventurous enough to go for the tower dive just yet. Ridwan, another bull rush. But into Zane, you know, that containment fence really causing problems, and J-Boy, Fury to Heaven doesn't have the mana but Noz running very low on the HP and even though he did get first blooded J-Boy is still going to have control of this lane Slevog just not having the early game sort of damage to do anything but look who is still ganking yeah and uh, this time there is no blink available to J-Boy good knock up good uh, uppercut and a good layering of the CC Wangle with the uh, pocket pistol getting that uh, kill with the Nora Disruptor and that is going to be a kill onto the mid lane for Imports Backpack and that's just all from that level 6 in the mid lane. Import getting that level 6 before Ragnarok was so huge because he could gank into the mid lane, force Kimbo away from the tower, and then force Ragnarok away, who was then defending that mid tower himself. And Wrangle could then rotate with Import and get the kill onto J-Boy. So those all plays were all linked together in what's about playing the map really well there. And just using their level advantage to great success. And now that Ragnarok has got that level 6, has got that Colosseum online, he might be looking to get some ganks out himself. As we might have a DC from Metboy, unfortunately. No, oh, that would really be a uh, huge shame as well. As you can see, yeah, there's a confirmed DC for Metboy. So Sunder going to have to play 4 versus 5 for the next couple of moments. And George, just a, a little technical issue on Metboy's end. Should be back into the game very quickly, at least. Because Import's backpack going to keep up the pressure, go for the resets as well. And uh, hey, at least Ridwana does get some solo XP and solo gold on that left-hand side. That's really um, scraping the barrel. Of oh, yeah, there. absolutely. We're, we're not scraping the bottom of the barrel. We're in the sub-basements beneath the Earth's mantle of the barrel at this point here uh, for that point. But hey, you know, glass half full. Okay, we'll go for that. Um, so we'll have to see what Import's backpack does. Obviously, Fangtooth is still available, but you still have Rangrock at that level 6 he has for that level 7 now. He has got a decent amount of damage in this early game, so it's just not free for Inputs Backpack, and obviously the most of their lead is in this solo lane with J-Boy dying twice. But with Ragnarok being taken down under half, it could be a good timing for them. You see Import already making his way over towards that fang tube and going to start this up nine and a half minutes. Again, we've had, had some rather late uh, pulls of the first fang tube. You know, normally here in EU, we do like our neutral objectives. Six or seven minutes is normally when we see that first pull, but uh, has been a bit delayed. But uh, not going to stop Import's backpack picking up that first neutral objective to themselves. And no contest possible from Sunder. Also, they're just going to respect the numbers disadvantage. But Metboy is back on the map. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't. There's nothing that Sunder could really do in that situation. You had Ragnarok go away, you had Netboy, unfortunately, not 
available, but it's only the first thing to, of the game. It's not game over just yet. And this game has a really nice uh, portal there. And another one thing I want to talk about is when I saw Import, he has Berserker's Axe first item. It's I have not seen before, but I actually really like Crunch. Because it gives him all the stats that he really wants. It gives that power, health, HP, ability, haste, and extra movement speed. And increases his gank potential as well. Giving him 20% movement speed into those fog balls. Mm. As well as him giving that massive slow on any time he uses his forward crunch. Yeah, just really able to stick towards these uh, members of Team Sunder. Just kind of having a look at the mobility uh, across the board. You know, aside from we have some short range dashes, no real leaps apart from that Gideon torn space. So, you know, having to play around that cooldown for sure. But Import, you know, really has been finding smart with these ganks, burning resources or burning blinks as well. Zane going a little bit too aggressive, just a tad too early. It does have some import to take away this free camp over on the duo side. Ridwano is at least here. Only one level below onto import, but not going to be enough to stop it there. But a good use of the knockup and the forward crunch. Stay spawned from Zane and Ridwano might pay for this one. Good shield slam. And the passive gives him enough shield to get away. But he had to burn the blink. That was a bit close to comfort. J-Boy getting ulted under tower by Noz. And in the meantime, Mini Prime has been started by Team Sunder, but Rango is trying to delay him as long as possible. It is a 2v1. J-Boy is also coming across. You can see as they're uh, dealing with this mom, J-Boy, just fresh off of the Colossal Blow underneath the solar lane. Tower is able to help team, uh, the team secure that Mini Prime. Ragnarok picking it up. Rango's still on, in pursuit, though. There's some hard HP bars. Rango could hit that seismic assault onto anyone. Wango's actually going to follow the torn space through. Still looking for Kimbo. He's going to have to burn his own blink to get away from the pressure. Import following once again. But Sunder are able to at least get away. I think blink for Mini Prime is not too much of a loss for Team Sunder. They didn't lose anyone else there. Import was obviously on the other side of the map, so they could easily start it off. J-Boy's also still being aggressive as possible in that off lane. I didn't actually see the Mini Prime went to. It does look like he's on Ragnarok as well, so... It's not on a lane, you have to see what he can do with it. He hasn't actually had that much to do with the map so far. He's just been farming up as fast mm -hmm. as he can. Has got 112 CS, so is still in line with import. Is a level down, though, so that's not going to be great for him. As we see, the tower screen for a bit longer. As we see, nothing else really being that interesting in terms of build. We see Noz actually going towards the Crystalline Chorus to deal with J-Boy's magical damage as much as he can. And... The good thing about Crystalline Chorus is that it deals with any magical damage, which includes Fire Blossom. So ah. as long as J-Boy is next to uh, Noz, that Crystalline Chorus is basically going to be max stacked all the time. Interesting interaction. They're going to see how it can uh, impact in that lane, as you say. So, like, I do like the adaptation coming out, uh, especially when dealing uh, with some of these more magical uh, dealing heroes in the off lane as well. A little bit of a grouping here towards the mid lane import pushing into Ragnarok's jungle. As I said, aside from that earlier gank onto Wangle, not really seen the Zaras make a move here. Ford Crunch on towards Kimbo, but it's been on point with the 180 torn spaces. But over on the left hand side, Julie gets the kill in a two in the isolated 2v2. That's very interesting. We didn't see how that happened, but it looks could be considering Fidwano is basically full HP. It looks like it was just caught out by Zen. So good job from the dual lane of Imports Pack Pack. And, I mean, nothing has really happened in this duo lane until that moment. And I think it might be to do with, obviously, Metboy having that XP disadvantage. He is a level down mm. still. So it's slowly coming back into things. And we're getting towards that mid game now. It's exactly what's going into mid lane. Coliseum on towards Wangle. He's going to stay inside it with a black hole. Wing Wangle will burn that blink to get away and actually returns a lot of damage himself with the void bomb and also neuro disruptor but import is here knows kimbo doesn't have the blink still thinking of the forward crunch but kimbo is at least out ragnarok here again coliseum has been burned but jboy waiting in the wings on that right hand side might have been spotted on that ward just to his left inside of the river he's going to complete the recall at least so the call the play has to be called off but this is a grouping up in they actually do get quite a considerable shove into that mid lane tier one yeah, but I don't know if they stayed for a bit too long because Wangle is only half HP, hasn't got less than half the mana, and the second Fang Tooth is spawning as uh, we just have to play to the replay system for a bit, little bit, so we'll get back on that eventually. And I, it's not great for this team Sunday because they got that mini farm, they did spend the blink on Kimbo, and Ragnarok didn't really get anything out of it. He has now lost that mini farm as well. 
And he's kind of on the wrong side of the map at the moment. They know that the second Fang Duke is spawning. They have seen where the mid lane of the Import Splat Pack and Import himself is heading over. And Metboy is in a very dangerous place because um, if you look where Zen is on the map, uh, what Ooh. the heck is going on? <laughs> Well, Metboy is uh, walking on air, as it turns out. As a, we have new some Murdoch ability. <laughs> new Murdoch ability. Can't believe uh, we're leaking the rework already. But uh, you see where he lands, though, is that uh, Fangtooth is going to drop. I think we need to uh, probably rewind a little bit to see what's going on here. As we're gonna, we do get the Fangtooth uh, being secured at least. Yep. Yeah, uh, so uh, we are just going to go uh, back to the caster cams for a moment, oh. just to quickly rewind. Hello. Uh, just to find out what happened. I mean, we know the outcome, at least. Fangtooth was going to be secured by Imports Backpack. Ridwana going very low, though, so it looks like there was some form of contest there. Yeah, it looks like they just pushed on to Metboy. We will see it in a bit, just waiting for the replay system to go back in time, which it has done. There Metboy obviously been forced away. Uh, looks like Blink was used by him, so that'd be why that happens. And um, Yeah. yeah. Okay, it looks like uh, so we're having uh, some technical issues. Hello uh, again. The, hello again. Uh, you know, some some technical issues with the replay system, of course. So even though Murdoch back on more earthly grounds, we're going to go for a bit of a restart over on our spectator side. Uh, so it's been an interesting point. Now we're 14 minutes into the game. It's three kills to zero in this one for now. Quite a low kill game in comparison with some of the other matches we've had so far. Yeah, it's not like there's been a lack of action. Impor has been ganking the map the world over at this stage. Ragnarok hasn't had that much influence so far. And considering it's only been three kills, I think Sunder is doing a pretty decent job of taking that storm and dealing with it. But when you mm. look at the scaling on both sides of the team, as I look up, Severog and Belica on Impor's backpack scale incredibly well. And then when you look at Team Sunder, they don't have the best sailing in the world. They got a decent on that Murdoch and the Zaras as it gets to that late game, really. But Gideon kind of falls off steel is in support, so he's not going to be that tanky come that late game. Krang is pretty decent in that mid game, but obviously it's going to fall off quite as well. So it's not looking great for Team Sunder right now. Well, we have, uh, we're back into the battleground. The replay system is allowing us to play. And you can see Sunder having to be forced away from that Fangtooth Pit import with the squad able to start taking on to this neutral objective. You just see Ragnarok unable to get into the pit for now. So this might just be import with the free secure, but they still have to get away from pit. That's going to be the important part. They're going to group up. Noz going to hit a nice double subjugate with a good combination, but J-Boy's ultimate comes out as well. That's going to take the Severog away, but they're looking for a pick on towards Ridwano. He's going low. The Radaran's ticking away on him, but he's still keeping himself alive. Good stasis bomb comes out from Zane to stop J-Boy's advance. Now Ridwano goes for the up down. There's the void bomb, and there is that low HP that Ridwano looks oh, to get away on. from, but a Mega Cosm is going to strike, and that's going to be the kill on towards Ridwano. Mega Corsa coming in clutch there. Um, obviously, we saw Ridwana go down quite low earlier. Did not expect him to die. And the reason why Inforce Backpack kind of just won that team fight is because Zayboy was not there at the start. And Sunder could not really set up at all come that fight. And by the time Zayboy was over already, the Fangtooth was taken down. Inforce Backpack could completely focus down on to Sunder. Ridwana actually did a really good job. He did die in the end, but he managed to distract a lot of people. So the double mm -hmm. subscate that came out of Noz wasn't really followed up on. So it could have been a lot worse for teams under. Yeah, definitely worse splits across that left hand side, uh, left and right hand side of that Fangtooth pit as well. And as you say, just a one kill on towards Ridwano. Second Fangtooth being secured for your team on Dusk side. And then we go back to that laning phase as well as we're approaching that 16 minute mark in. Everyone's back in their rivers. Just wondering when we're going to see that big Colosseum play coming out from Ragnarok. It's quite a bit of pressure on Ragnarok to uh, in the mid to late game part as well. Because we're, we're looking at the team fight coming out from Sunder. And I do like what I'm seeing here. But we just not had that setup that they, maybe Sunder are looking for. No, I mean, they have really good combinations with that Colosseum Black Hole and Sealed Slam, but this has not been used. J-Boy, uh, that's not a good place to be. Yeah, it's going to be Col uh, Colossal Blow straight into a Subjugate. He's got the Surge to get the uh, dash and a blink of his own. But Import's just going to blink after him with the up, uh, Upper Crunch as well. And that's going to be Import taking yet another kill in that right-hand side. But there was also a death off screen. Metboy is down in the dual lane. Once again, in the two versus two, it's six kills to zero. 
and import pack pack are starting to ramp up the pressure. They got those two kills on the side. Haven't taken a tower yet, but they're not done fighting just yet. Ragnarok is going to use the Colosseum, the black holes over the top. Yeah, it's going to use that damage. The ultimate coming down as well. Low health bars. Kimber just needs to hit the abilities. Ragnarok is down. It's all on Kimber, but he just doesn't have the mana to find the kills. And that's going to be Import and Wangle leaving the Colosseum and the Black Hole with their lives still in their hands. Meanwhile, in this left hand side, Ridwan is going for the engage. It's a knock up on towards Julie. Just going to walk this one out. Zayn does hit the stasis bomb. The shield stream comes out. Metboy is on the way, but Ridwano trying to, maybe goes in just a little bit too far. It's going to be him dropping in at Dua's side. You've got to cut your losses there with Rano. There's no real reason to go in there. Met Boy was not back just yet. And you didn't get anything else. And I want to talk about that mid lane 2v2 fight. Because in terms of damage, Team Sunder probably added more damage with the Black Hole and Coliseum over the top. But mm -hmm. Imports Backpack won the fight. It was because they managed to single target down Ragnarok. Whereas Kimbo on that AoE ultimate was taking both of the Imports Backpack members low. And it's just that difference of Kimbo being on full HP but not able to actually walk in because of the 2v1. And now, with all of that press are gone, it is another mini prime being taken, and this time for Imports Backpack. Oh, Kimbo had the audacity to walk into Imports back, Import Backpack's river. He is able to get away with the Taunt Space. Boy Bomb does connect Wangle, looking for another size because Salt Ridwano is here, so has to use it on towards the steel. But the presence of this uh, support is, uh, allows Kimbo to get away. But another neutral objective going the way of Import's backpack, Falcon. Uh, I didn't actually see who it went on just because of the chaos of the fight. It looks like it is on Import, so he's going to be able to uh, utilize it quite well in this coming fight. And the third Pangtooth is probably going to be spawning whilst he still has that buff. So that's going to be the actual greatest benefit of this mini prime, just securing that third Pangtooth if they can. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the map now, both side lane towers have been taken. Ragnarok, you don't want to back oh, there. Oh no, Mice have been caught on the lazy back as Import Forward crunches forward. The Torn Space is too far away. Ragnarok trying to juke, got the fancy footwork, but the punch comes out and the knockup is enough. Kimbo's black hole nearly pulls Import in, but it has is able to at least escape the ultimate. And as you say, with that black, with the uh, with the Fangtooth third on the board coming up very soon as well. That's two big ultimates down. That's two big ultimates down, and that's your jungler down as well. So even though they aren't just on it just yet, Ragnarok is going to have to reset. Ridwano is around, but you're not killing Import. He is way too tanky. He's just not finding that lockdown at the moment. Kimbo, you know, he's hitting his abilities. He's finding a connection. They are just a little bit too tanky. And now Noz has been pulled over. Going to at least be stunned up by the steel. The uh, containment fence comes down, keeps Ridwano inside the pen. But the ball rush away is going to be enough to keep, get the steal back to safety. But Impulse Backpack still with control of his left hand side. They're actually going to decide to back away. Resets coming in on Wangle and Import. But you can imagine they're going to make a play for one of these neutrals. Ragnarok back on the board. Sunder has to fight this third fang tooth. If they let this go, it can be disastrous for them. As we get another tab screen just for the moment, you can see that both carries are on their second item. Both mid laners have completed those two items as well. And we see Kimbo gone for that true silver bracelet. It's, eh, I don't really like too much, but I mean, Imports Backpack just take the third fan to without Sunder even being around to contest it. No, no. Well, thank you very much, says Imports, is able to secure that third fang to for themselves, as we saw that 8% uh, scaling oh, on oh. the physical damage. And Kimbo probably dies about 8% quicker because of it as well. The mid laner is going to be down. J-Boy gets some alone time with this right-hand side solo tier one, but unable to take it down. And Noz looks like he's moving back to the solo side. This mid lane tier one, though, for Sunder looks to be the next target, and that's going to fall very quickly. It's been actually a really clean game for Impulse Backpack. And, uh, yeah, that's just another death. Ridwano is going to be taken down by Rango. Looks like that happened in the mid lane. Not sure exactly what happened, but we'll find out eventually. Import as well. Look at him where he's on a map. Met boy might be in danger. Okay. Okay, thank you. Just uh, some words from production as well as uh, this game is going to carry on. But as you can say, you know, I want to pick up on that uh, point, Falcon. 11 to 0. Like, this has been an, an incredibly clean game, as, as you've said, for Import's backpack. And Sunder, just not able to. I don't know, it's, it's not for lack of trying at least, but it's just whenever they've been in their fights, Impulse Backpack have just been a bit too far away. I mean, Ragnarok going on towards uh, the Decker here, but just there's just not any follow-up coming out. 
It just feels like Sunder's one step behind always. Import is always making those proactive plays and Sunder is trying to react to them. Uh, they did pretty well in that first mini prime getting that over whilst Import was over there. But apart from that, they haven't really been able to start something of their own, which is the main issue. And that's going to really continue as the game goes on. Realistically, mm. I think that they still have a chance for a tank tooth is not the be all end all really at this time in the game. And I mean, if they get a kill, there is decent shutdowns on the side of Import's backpack. I'm not too sure what the kill distribution is at the moment. If it's kind of a quick scoreboard, never mind. Import's just kin killed Kimbo as well. You see now, Ragnarok going to be the next target as well. That Void Bomb slicing assault the ultimate and Import more than happy to burn. The blink is going to chase after it, but Wangle. Is the one who's getting that kill and now the mid lane it's an absolute inferno as the tier two is going to be dropping that mid lane inhibitor another tantalizing prospect but imports backpack so far ahead on the levels the gold the experience now going to look to try and get the yet another neutral objective this is a very early pull of the all prime but sunder are nowhere near to try and contest you got Noz who has been able to stack up on the server import as well has a lot of healing on his abilities so there's no real danger of them dying to this orb fine and when you bring julian wrangle over who has insane single target damage uh, it dies very very quickly so mm -hmm. it's kind of gone bad from to worse for team sunder basically they probably lose at least one in hip here unless they get a miracle turnaround there's no real point defending these tier two towers because they are just going to drop down very very quickly and it's going to be more interesting to see what oh no we see what um how it imports backpack presses this if they go for a 1v1 or a 4-1 with Noz pressing that side lane. But we'll have to wait because um we get another free stream again. Sure here. It's a nice uh rock rock striking quite in a pose. He's about to jump over that ledge down in towards that blue side of the jungle. Will be lit up uh, with wards as well as imports backpack. I do know where the jungler has been. And you know what? I I think I'm not, I'm not trying to be too harsh here, but I, I I think I can forgive Sunder for maybe thinking ahead to game two at this point. And I mean, I I love a good comeback and all that, but I think Imports Backpack might just be a little bit too far forward. As uh, it looks like we're still stuck on the freeze frame. Oh. We're gonna jump forwards as uh, well. Hang frame. on, everyone's still alive. Okay, that's good. Ragnarok has uh, got to his jungle. That's what can we good. learn from the screenshot? What we... What's going on? <laughs> We can see that all of Import's backpack have reset. They're now running back into the lane. We can see that there's a tower screen, so we can look at items instead. With Wano picking up the... I'm going to be honest, I can't remember what that item's called. It's so literally, uh, so little been used. I believe it's called... Ah, Warden's Faith, that's the one. It's an anti crit item. It's going to be really good against Julie, but... I don't think it's that useful, basically, in this team comp. I'd prefer Stonewall to just deal with Import and or Julie's uh, Boomerang. Mm -hmm. As we are just going to have a slight more technical issue, so we're just going to try and sort that out. So we're going to come back to us. Hello again for <laughs> several times for the first oh, time, dear. absolutely here. But uh, you know, we're still we're still along for the ride, at least. You know, do we do apologise, of course, for the, the technical issues going on in game number three? Of course, has to happen when uh, I'm casting the games. I don't know. I just feel like I bring bad luck Be whenever it's technical. I am. I am. Cursed. I know we say I... cast a curse is a thing, yes. but normally that's causes the players to die not the actual entire replay system yeah so uh yeah. and now we're just getting a word on production as well it looks like we're gonna go for a full game and client side restart as well so we get a little bit more time uh to get acquainted uh with each other uh of course you and i switch <laughs> chats and also you and Falcon as well um <laughs> But yeah, you know, 13, 13 kills to zero, honestly. Such a clean game as well. I've got I feel like I've got to throw the weighted question to you, Falcon, because I'm really like trying to fill air here. Sunder getting back into this game, right? Oh. How many team fights do you think this will require? So they need to kill every single person on imports back pack to get rid of the all primes and also get the shutdown gold from that. So that's gonna be one at least. Then there's probably going to be fight around the prime with Fang Tooth because I don't expect them to get a fight for zero. So that's going to be two. Mm -hmm. Then they need to get a third one to start clearing towers. And then they need to get a fourth one to start getting inhibs and clear the game. So it's going to be four in a row they need to do. Uh, Imports back crack needs one. Yeah, that's uh, kind of what we're looking at here as well. And also, you know, with, with those four team fights, 
they have to be clean. They have to be cleaned. Five zero mm. team fights as well played perfectly. It does. It is quite su surprised me though, Falcon, with the composition that they've drafted. As I'm just getting up on on my other monitor as well. There's so much engaged potential. There's so much agency. Like this, it feels like a very proactive team composition. But everything they try, imports backpack, as you say, is just one step ahead. I don't think the Zars and Steel picks have been beneficial for their comp recently. I think if they had some sort of more proactive jungler, maybe a Chimera or something like that, that can really gank from that level 3 period, it would have been a lot better for them. Steel as well just can't really do much in lane against a Decker. So it might have been better for them to go for a more skin pick like the Narbas that helps in the mid-game team fights. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I mean, they have the Gideon, which is a really good early mid laner. They have the Krang, which we have seen plenty of times today do amazingly well. Hmm. But then again, you go back to Import's backpack, you go to, back to Import, who has been ganking so much, and he has just completely shut down the two main early game areas for Team Sunder, which is that off lane and is that mid lane. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know with import it's almost like he knows exactly where he needs to be at, at that time as so it looks like we have a moving and working replay as we're back onto the battleground once again apologies so much as uh, this caster bringing the curses of the replay system as well but we're back at 24 and a half minutes in to see how this game plays out of course we've uh, been the writing certainly on the wall the team sunder as it looks like imports backpack with that all prime buff able to start pushing in these lanes mid lane inhibitor going to start being seized on import just pushing j boy away import takes no damage on the back end of that as well julian wangle dealing with this inhibitor once again i mean you no know, ridwano's so somewhat tanky but look at that coming out from wangle and julian that's unreal i mean he has no magical resistance at all he has gone fire blossom into warden's faith which warden's help this gives him no protections against wangle at all who is a complete monster in this game right now and Ken Sunder was just late to the defense. They were all pushing down that dual lane for some reason. Not sure why. Imports boxing the way between that tier two and the oh. in here. Just let the minions come over. Oh my word. Ridwall is dead. What? You know, I, I mean, he got chunked out initially, but it's the wasteland passive coming out from that Drongo that gets the finishing blow. And they're going to be without that shield slam as it just feels like a bit of a formality for Imports. Back back. They are looking to try and secure the perfect ADA, but of course Kimbo's black hole, Sunder have something to say about it. Import is going low, looking for a shutdown, and Import is going to get the kill on towards... Uh, Kimbo gets killed on towards Import, but his siege is not over yet because they have lost J-Boy. So it's, no, it's a four versus three. Metboy, Kimbo, and Ragnarok having to go back to the fountain to heal back up, so right lane inhibitor is down, mid lane inhibitor is down, but losing Import... Looks like they decide that uh, they need someone else to carry the backpack. That left-hand side may be looking like the next target. Where are we going to see the next siege? TT Tower is still up, so they have some time. They need to push the wave back in as well, so they can't just immediately rotate over. Final Fantasy is up as well, but Inbot is dead whilst Mr. Ragnarok is still alive, so it could be quite risky to go for that. Instead, they could just look for a pick. Oh, Wangle and Oz do have to be careful. Of course, Coliseum, Shield Slam available to them. So Ragnarok just needs to find the right moment. Wangle, of course, has to be the target. He's going to go in. That's a lot of return damage. Epoch Stasis comes out. Shield Slam knocks one to Nos, but Wangle is the one who blinks away, and they just can't find the lockdown they're looking for. Ragnarok again. The black hole is back off cooldown. Wangle just simply sidesteps it with the blink, and is able to get some return damage down. Ragnarok too low out of this fight, and now Wangle and Nos still alive, weathering the storm, and now Nos is the one dealing the damage. Wangle is the one who collects. And now Ridwano next on the chopping block. Kimbo running and fleeing back towards his base. But Import is coming back from spawn. He's looping round from that uh, right-hand side. Torn space already used. Noz blinks. So does Import. And Kimbo is down. Four members drop. And J-Boy can only watch as that third inhib is going to drop. And this core next target. All Prime is gone, but Import's backpack does not need it. They had one death. Import going a bit too hard in that solo lane inhibitor j boy is going to try but what are you going to do you are 5v1 you are going to be obliterated by julie and soon after the core is going to be taken down by imports backpack the first game has been done and in 27 and a half minutes that was the cleanest game we've seen today